enjoy the grace of life with the saints and the all-sufficient grace in our sufferings. We experience the process triune God as the grace of life in meeting with the saints on the ground of oneness, and we can experience Him as our increasing and all-sufficient grace in the midst of trials and sufferings. Hallelujah for the grace of God, so all-sufficient, abounding, and rich. Grace in its highest definition is God in the Son to be enjoyed by us, this is the highest definition of grace, and it is so applicable to our being and our situation. Grace is not merely something done or given by God but God Himself our portion, glorious. God was incarnated to be mingled with man so that man would receive and possess God. The grace received of God through the Lord is Christ Himself for our enjoyment. Paul counted all things as dung, he only counted God in Christ as grace, and by this grace, the Lord experienced, he labored more than the others. Hallelujah! God in Christ as the Spirit came to us and is constantly coming to us as grace to be with us, be our everything, and be our enjoyment, on our side, we need to simply contact the Lord and receive grace upon grace. The living Christ is realized as the Spirit to be our experience and enjoyment. May we know this grace and may we live by this grace, may we increasingly sense the Lord as grace and partake of Him as grace. God is our portion and our everything, our God is our portion, our love, and our everlasting all. There's nothing that we have or own here on earth or in heaven above but Christ Himself, who is our portion. Today grace is God giving Himself to us in His divine trinity, He passed through many processes to be able to dispense Himself into us. When we enjoy the Lord as grace, He is happy and we are happy. He dispenses Himself into us to be our portion and meet all our needs, the result is that He accomplishes His will. By our enjoyment of Christ as grace, we can live a life for the fulfillment of God's purpose. We don't need anything else but the grace of God, for the grace of God is sufficient and abundant. May the love of God flow in the grace of Christ through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, 2 Corinthians 13:14. The grace of God is manifested to us and in us to be our full portion for our enjoyment. The Bible speaks of only one thing, grace, which is God, consummating in the new Jerusalem. Grace is the manifestation of the triune God in His embodiment in three aspects, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Regardless of what subject the Bible touches, it is concerned with the triune God in His embodiment in three aspects to be manifested as grace consummating in the new Jerusalem. This is the highest and most central revelation shown throughout the New Testament, and it consummates in the New Jerusalem as the final product of God's work throughout the ages. Hallelujah! Experience the process triune God as the grace of life in meeting with the saints on the ground of oneness. In PSA 133-3 we are told that, when brothers dwell together in oneness, God sends the blessing, life forever. This oneness is a place, like the mountains of Zion, where the dew of Hermon come down, and there Jehovah commanded the blessing of life. The oneness is like the descending dew upon the mountains of Zion and the anointing oil upon Aaron, P.S.A. 133. The dew signifies the grace of life, 1 Pet. 3-7. The grace of life is the supply of life. As we live in the church life, meet with the saints, and are in the meetings of the church, we enjoy the process triune God as the grace of life. As we meet with the saints in one accord and on the ground of oneness, we experience the process triune God as the grace of life. We all can testify that, as we meet with the saints in the church life, we experience the anointing of the Spirit, the painting of the process triune God, as we are in the meetings of the church, again and again, we gain more and more of God. At the same time, we enjoy the process triune God as the grace of life, the life supply for our enjoyment. It is by this grace of life, the bountiful supply of the divine life, that we can live the Christian life, by grace, we can live a life that is impossible for people in the world to live. When we experience the process triune God as the grace of life in meeting with the saints on the ground of oneness, the husbands can love their wives to the uttermost and the wives can submit to their husbands in a full way. Our living in oneness and in one accord with the enjoyment of the grace of life issues in our receiving God's blessing, life forever. We shouldn't underestimate the importance of the church as a corporate person where we can receive the ointment and as the place under the descending dew. We shouldn't think that, as long as we are by ourselves and set time aside to enjoy the Lord, we enjoy the Lord in a full way. If we separate ourselves from the church and do not regularly meet with the saints, we have no share in the anointing and are finished with the enjoyment of the grace of life. Other Christians may say that we meet too much, too many times, and we travel too much to meet and blend and have conferences. They think that, as long as they pray and read the Bible, they can experience the Lord in a full way outside the church life. It is true that we can enjoy the Lord at home, us and Him, and we should do this often. As we enjoy the Lord in our personal time with Him, we enjoy and receive a certain amount of grace, but it is not as sweet, rich, powerful, inspiring, and sweet as the grace we receive in the church. 
When we meet with the saints in the church life on the ground of oneness, the Lord's blessing is outpoured, and we enjoy the grace of life and the rich anointing. No matter whether the meetings of the church seem to be high or low, rich or poor, as long as we are there with the saints, we experience the ointment and the dew. The more we come to the meetings, the more we are preserved in the Lord's grace, and the more the grace of life becomes our portion for our enjoyment. But if we separate ourselves from the church life, we cut ourselves off from the full supply of grace, after a while, we may find ourselves wholly back into the world. May the Lord have mercy on us and keep us meeting with the saints on the ground of oneness to enjoy and experience the grace of life with all the saints. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for bringing us into the church life where we can enjoy the anointing of the Spirit and the rich grace of life. Hallelujah for the meetings of the church on the ground of oneness where we receive the rich supply of the divine life and experience the adding of God's element to our being. Amen, Lord. Keep us in the meetings of the church day by day and house to house so that we may be under the watering dew and the rich flow of the ointment. Preserve us in the enjoyment of the grace of life with all the saints. Save us from trying to think we can experience the Lord in a full way outside the church life. May we dwell in oneness with the saints and enjoy the Spirit's anointing and the descending grace of life. Experience the Lord as our increasing and all-sufficient grace in the midst of sufferings and trials. In 2 Cor. 12 Paul opens up concerning the thorn he had in the flesh, God allowed a messenger of Satan to be in his flesh and cause him much suffering, to the extent that he prayed three times that the Lord would remove this thorn. God's answer to him, however, was not to remove the thorn, he simply told Paul that his grace is sufficient for him, for his power is perfected in weakness, 2 Corinthians 12 9. Therefore, Paul gladly boasted in his weakness so that the power of Christ might tabernacle over him. He experienced the Lord as the increasing and all-sufficient grace in the midst of sufferings. We may be in a very similar situation, We may have a thorn in our flesh and a certain amount of sufferings in our environment, and we may ask the Lord many times to remove these from us. The more we ask the Lord to remove the suffering, the more He doesn't do it, rather, He is graces with our spirit for us to enjoy as the increasing and all-sufficient grace in the midst of sufferings and trials. We shouldn't shake our heads and say that it is impossible, also, we shouldn't try to exercise our own ability to try to endure the suffering. We simply need to come to the Lord and contact Him. We need to turn to Him in all our situations and contact Him in spirit. When we touch the Lord as grace, we experience Him in that moment as the grace that we need. In this way, we can go on, and we are inwardly supplied with all that we need. When we meet with the saints on the ground of oneness, we enjoy the rich grace of life. When we are in suffering and contact the Lord, we enjoy the increasing and sufficient grace of God. Only by experiencing the process triune God as grace can we go on living the Christian life and endure the most difficult situations. Today, through the pandemic all around the world, there are many brothers and sisters who are suffering. We need to be encouraged, on one hand, that we're in the body suffering together, and on the other hand, we can contact the Lord and receive the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ as the Spirit of grace to be with us in a particular way. It is in our experience of sufferings and hardships that we can contact the Lord and enjoy Him as our burden-bearer and our all-sufficient grace. In such situations, His grace can be multiplied to us. We have both sufferings and limitations. Sometimes our limitations are worse than our sufferings. We human beings don't like limitations, however, all kinds of situations cause us to have limitations and weaknesses. We all have weaknesses, we are so weak in spirit but so strong in our natural life to live in the self and commit sin. But when it comes to the things of God, the good things of the Lord, we are all so weak. Through our sufferings, limitations, and weaknesses, we can enjoy the Lord's all-sufficient and multiplying grace. God is truly wise, He has arranged all kinds of persons and situations in our life to force us to turn to Him and enjoy Him as the all-sufficient grace. God's grace is sufficient for us, His power tabernacles over us when we suffer. He protects us inwardly, and His grace supplies us to endure the thorn. He may not remove the thorn, but He will multiply His grace toward us. As we enjoy the rich grace of God in sufferings, many problems will no longer be a problem to us, and we can enjoy Christ as our burden-bearer. When we are in a trying environment, we need to learn to pray and tell the Lord. Lord Jesus, we want to experience you as our increasing and all-sufficient grace that meets all our needs. May your grace abound to us even as we go through sufferings and hardships. We simply turn to you, dear Lord Jesus. We want to experience your sufficient grace. May your power tabernacle over us and protect us inwardly. May your grace supply us to endure the suffering and bear the pain. Multiply your grace in us. May your grace be so abounding in us and to us in all our daily living. Amen. Lord, increase the level of grace. Increase our enjoyment of Christ as grace day by day, in all our situations. 
Grant us and grant all the suffering saints the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ as the Spirit of grace in all our situations.